listening to Big World Network. Delroy vs. the Ishtari, Season 2, Episode 12, A Lover's Reward. Written and read by Baron Stevens. Nice of you to come back, I said to Minx through the narrow slit in my cell door. Up until then, I'd been sitting alone in the brig for several hours and working myself into a pretty good martyr mood. It's the least I can do for my former master. Did you get my message to General Tyson? I did, Peabrain. In fact, he wants to talk to you. But he warned that if you wasted his time, he would do various painful and violent things to your assorted body parts. He was much more detailed, but I figured I'd spare you the imagery. Ah, here he is now. General Tyson walked up to the door and glared through the slit at me. This bot here seems to think that you've solved this crisis. Right now, I have a growing fleet of Earth ships staring at a growing fleet of Ishtari ships. They are demanding their product or they will open fire. You have one minute to explain, Higston. That's just it, General. I promised to deliver a plant that tastes better than humans to them, if they stop eating us. They agreed, but if I don't get the plant to them soon, they will attack. The general snorted. That's basically what the bot said. Yes, so you see, you have to let me out in order to stop this. So, in other words, you are bargaining for your freedom. If I let you out, you'll stop this war. Exactly. Why don't you just give me this plant and I'll give it to them? It's not that simple, sir. The seeds have to be prepared in a special way or they won't sprout. I'm the only one who knows the secret. And I suppose you won't let anyone else know the secret so that you can bargain your way to freedom. Figures. So how much money is in it for you? The general asked. Lots. His eyes narrowed. Tell you what. You tell me what your secret is, and I'll not put you in front of a firing squad. What kind of a deal is that? I felt a rush of anger. Look, I have a way to prevent this war, but you have to not be so stubborn and set me free. You selfish toad. With that, General Tyson turned and stormed out of the brig. Well, that went well, I said sarcastically. It could be worse, Mink said. You could have been sent to death row or been eaten by the Ishtari. Thanks for that cheery thought. I slumped back down onto the bench and tried to think of what I should do. Was I being too selfish? Should I let go of my one bargaining chip for freedom in order to save the human race? The answer was obvious, but I didn't like it. I don't know how long I sat there moping. I didn't even notice when Minx left. Someone tapping on the door brought me out of my funk. When I looked up through the tiny window, I saw Stella's beauteous face glaring back. So, I suppose you're going to hold on to this little secret of yours until all the charges are dropped against you, she asked. Thought about it, I answered. I should have known, and I was starting to think that you weren't such a scumbucket. I was wrong about that. I stood up and approached the door. I didn't say I would. Not even I am that selfish. She raised an eyebrow. Look, I'll tell you the secret. No strings attached. I only want the war to end, okay? Wow, she said. The general thought I'd have the best shot at beating the info out of you. I didn't think it would be this easy. Yeah, well, you thought wrong. I took a deep breath before saying... After the plant matures, you take the seeds and soak them for three hours in a mixture of two parts hydrochloric acid, one part calcium carbonate, and one part vodka. Vodka? Yeah, well, that was my contribution to the key. Stella looked at me and nodded. You surprised me, Delroy. Thank you. With that, she smiled at me before turning and leaving the brig. I lay down on the cot and tried to calculate how many years I'd rot in prison. But to see Stella smile at me again... It might just be worth it. I then quickly drifted off to sleep. I was startled awake by the creaking of my cell door. I opened my eyes and blinked the sleep away as I sat up on my cot. Stella stood there in the open doorway, with Minx right behind. She looked like an angel bathed in the light from the hallway outside. What's going on? I asked. You're free, Stella said. EarthGov has cleared your record in exchange for the patent to your seed-growing process. But I... My brain felt foggy. But I didn't make any such deal. 
Stella smiled. I did. You did? I had to still be dreaming. I pinched myself to be sure. Ow! Um, so why? She shrugged. Well, he did save my life a few times, and he turned out to not be a total loser. I managed to convince General Tyson to drop all charges. Thanks. But what about your first bounty assignment? Will this cost you your job? Probably not, but it won't look good on my record. I'll keep getting the easy assignments until I prove myself. Stella, you're as kind as you are beautiful. The elation that filled my soul caused me to jump up, grab her in a hug, and plant a big kiss on her lips. I woke up in the sick bay with a bandage around my throbbing head. Minx hovered over me like a worried mother. Sir, it is most wonderful to see you alive. I put my hand on my head and sat up. Stella stood near the door. Sorry, reflexes. You should have warned me before doing that. I grimaced. Agreed. I fingered the bandage before getting off the bed. A thought occurred to me. So, if I had warned you I was about to kiss you, you would have let me? No, I just wouldn't have slugged you as hard. I nodded, though it caused my head to throb more. I don't suppose I still get to keep any percentage in the deal with the Ishtari. Not a penny. All goes to EarthGov. Great. I should have felt more remorse for losing all that wealth, but all I could think of at the moment was how good it felt not to have to spend the rest of my life in prison. I would feel the pain of the lost riches later, after I thought about it more. So, this is it then. You're just going to drop me off at the nearest spaceport, and we'll never see each other again. Something like that. We stared at each other for several seconds before she added, Come, I have a present for you. With that, she turned around and left the room. Minx and I followed her out into one of the docking ports of the Ulysses. It seemed a little odd that all the windows were covered so that I couldn't see outside. General Tyson stood there along with a few armed marines. What's going on? I asked. Stella answered. We decided that since you were forthcoming with your secret, that we wouldn't let you leave empty-handed. What? Does this mean you'll become my beloved wife? Dream on. But how would you like to get the Rutherford's revenge back? Really? Yes. We picked it up and restored it to working condition. And since no one has a clear title to it, we put it in your name. Wow. I don't know what to say. You're awesome. Stella continued. But we can't have you going around and impersonating Baron Rutherford anymore. I took the liberty to rename your ship for you. The paint pots should be finished by now. She pushed a button that caused the curtains to automatically pull away from the windows. There sat my ship, looking a little banged up, but operational. One thing was different, though. Written neatly in the spot that used to say Rutherford's Revenge, it now read, Delroy is a dunglehead. Um, that's nice. Thank you. I especially love the bright pink color. I knew you'd like it. So does this mean I'm free to go? I asked. The sooner the better. Just remember, if you even think of doing any more of your lame brain scams, I'll have your butt back in jail so fast you'll think you entered hyperspace without a ship. So, I said thoughtfully, in order to see you again, all I have to do is commit a crime. That would do it. It just might be worth it, I said, smiling. Stella didn't smile. No, it wouldn't. I looked into her eyes to see them sparkle with menace, and... Was that affection I saw mixed in? I wanted to think so. It gave me hope. I just needed to find a way to spend more time with her in order to convince her to spend eternity with me. But at that moment, all I could do was stand there and grin at her like an idiot. Oh, she added, I've also decided to let you have your bot back. I really don't need a butler in my line of work, and the whole concept of having a sentient being enslaved to another is appalling to me. Really? Stella, you are the most awesome woman I know. I love you. She rolled her eyes upward and shook her head. I turned to Minx. Okay, no more insults, right? Minx shook his head. Sorry, squid face, I cannot comply. What? Why? Stella smiled. Because Minx is still technically mine, I'm assigning him to keep an eye on you, and the only other order I've given him is that he must insult you at every opportunity. Minx put his hand on my shoulder. 
That's right, Barf Brain. Great. So he's also going to be my parole officer. Something like that. Stella pushed the button that opened the airlock. Be good, Delroy. The look she gave me was like the one my mother used to give me after raiding the cookie jar before supper. I walked through the airlock with Minx right behind. Once I was on the other side, I spun around and asked, Stella, will you marry me? She pushed the button and closed the door in my face. I took that to mean maybe. I clapped my hands and turned around to survey my ship. Yes, my ship now. Not just a stolen item from Impound. So, Minx, my friend, where shall we go to find our fortune? I hear they are looking for miners at the Quantilus asteroid field. The pay is good, but the work is hard and life expectancy is cut in half. Minx rolled up to the pilot console. I shook my head. No, we need to find something better than that. Something that provides better income with less danger. I headed to the command chair and sat down. Set course for the Orion sector. Perhaps we can start a new business there. Minx turned his head and displayed a grimace on his LED. A legal one, I hope. Well, of course. I wouldn't even think of doing anything else, I smirked. Now, set course. Yes, Captain Dunglehead. presentation of Big World Network. Visit us on bigworldnetwork.com for more free weekly series or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for listening. Listening to Big World Network.